Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. In 1973, Roman Gabriel may have been the best quarterback in all of football. He finished the season as the league leader in just about every category. Passing completions, he led it with 270. Passing yards, he led it with a career-high 3,219. Passing touchdowns, he led it with 23. He was a pro bowler, was named the comeback player of the year by the Pro Football Writers Association, and guided the Eagles to having the 8th best offense in the league after finishing dead last the year before, sitting 26 out of 26 teams. But what you might not know is that this incredible season by Gabriel almost never happened. And what I mean by that is that two years before, he was dangerously close to losing his starting job and maybe never getting another shot to play in the NFL again. In 1971, with his career on the line, Gabriel had a game that may have single-handedly saved his career. And this is the story behind that potentially career-saving game. Before I talk about the game itself, we need some context as to how Gabriel was playing beforehand, both from a pre-1971 standpoint to understand why he was considered a great for a really long time, and from a 1971 standpoint to understand why it was moments away from crashing down. In 1962, the Los Angeles Rams, needing a quarterback after a lethargic offense the year before, chose NC State quarterback Roman Gabriel in the first round of the draft. And the Rams really wanted him. In fact, they wanted him so badly that when Gabriel signed the contract, Gabriel said that the contract offer was more than he could even hope for. You don't hear too many guys saying that. Whether this was a case of the Rams not wanting to take any chances with the Oakland Raiders of the AFL, who drafted him in the first round of their draft, the Rams misjudging the market, or a bit of both, is up for you to decide. However, what was clear was that this pick and the subsequent contract were 100% worth it. Because even though Gabriel only started 23 games in his first four years, primarily sitting behind veterans like Zeke Brakowski and Bill Munson in that stretch, by the end of the 1960s, he established himself as one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. In 1967, he threw 25 touchdown passes, which ranked fourth in the league. He had an 87.2 passer rating, which ranked third, and he guided the Rams to an 11-1-2 record as they won the Coastal Division and made the postseason for the first time since 1955. In all likelihood, if they handed out the awards at the end of the season like they do now, and not before the regular season ended like they did in 1967, Gabriel probably wins the MVP over Johnny Unitas, especially on the heels of that iconic regular season finale against the Colts, where he threw three touchdown passes and was less than two points shy of a perfect passer rating in a 34-10 demolition, which took the Colts from undefeated to out of the postseason entirely. Gabriel followed up with another great year in 1968, where he made it to his second straight Pro Bowl while finishing fifth in touchdown passes and got into the Rams to another season with double-digit wins. And in 1969, Gabriel had what had to be his finest season as a pro. Not only did he lead the league with 24 touchdown passes on just seven interceptions, which is a great ratio by today's standards and an absolutely insane ratio by 1969 standards, and not only did he lead the Rams to a division title with an 11-3 record, but he was named a Pro Bowler, a first-team All-Pro, and the MVP of the league. Even though Gabriel was solid the following year in 1970, and was still a really good quarterback, he didn't win any accolades, and was now on the wrong side of 30. And it seemed like to start off the 1971 season, father time was hitting him in the worst possible way. When the 1971 season began, obviously, Gabriel was the team's starting quarterback. There was no controversy whatsoever about that. And for the first game of the season, they were traveling to Tulane Stadium to take on the New Orleans Saints. This should be an easy win for the Rams, right? They played the Saints four times before, and they won all four times, with none of those games even being particularly close. In the four meetings between these divisional opponents, Los Angeles outscored New Orleans 127-63, which comes out to an average of 16 points per game. And now, the Saints are starting a rookie quarterback in his first ever game. This should be a cakewalk. Instead, it's not and the Saints win it 24-20. Now this game is highly controversial, as the Saints won it on this touchdown run by Archie Manning late in the fourth quarter. You be the judge as to whether or not he crossed the plane before fumbling, but rest assured that this would be the last time any controversial play would happen in a Saints-Rams game held in New Orleans. However, even if you take that controversy out of it, Gabriel still had a pretty poor game, going 11 for 30, which is a completion percentage of less than 37%. For some perspective on how bad that is, in road games where Gabriel threw at least 25 passes, this was the worst completion percentage of his career. And after the game, Gabriel was hearing a bunch of criticism. He didn't play a whole lot in the preseason, and when he did play, as was the case during this game, he didn't play well. It also didn't help that backup quarterback Jerry Rome was surprisingly good during the preseason. 
The good news for Gabriel was that head coach Dami Prothero wasn't going to bench him after one bad game, saying, I'm not a two-quarterback man. However, it's never a good sign when your coach is saying that you need more confidence, and when the color commentator for the scheme, Irv Cross, spent the whole game bashing you because he had never seen so many open receivers in his life. Now, one bad game might not be a cause for concern, but two? Yeah, that's not great. The following week, the Rams took on the Falcons at home, and Gabriel threw for just 144 yards and no touchdowns, while fumbling twice and averaging less than 5 yards per attempt. Gabriel got booed by the home fans, and the booing was so loud that afterwards, kicker David Ray criticized the fans for booing him. But winless after two games against what looked like two easy teams to beat on paper, the fans were rightfully frustrated. The good news was that the Rams were about to win a game, as in Week 3, they beat the Chicago Bears 17-3. The bad news was that Roman Gabriel looked absolutely terrible. He went 13 for 31 with no touchdowns, two interceptions, and a passer rating of 32.3, which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball to the ground on every single play. To give you an idea of how bad this one was, at one point, Jerry Rome went onto the field by accident, and the fans applauded. Once Rome was waved off and Gabriel went in, the Boo Birds got intense. Gabriel was looking like arguably the worst quarterback in football over the first month of the season, and now he was playing for his job. By this point in 1971, Gabriel looked like a shell of his former self, and even with pleas from Jerry Rome telling the fans not to boo him, saying that fans should back their quarterback and that he's done so many great things for the team, it was painfully obvious that Gabriel was not very good anymore. And in week 4 against the 49ers, he got hurt late in the first quarter, getting knocked unconscious after going 0-1 on the day. The Rams won the game on the strength of their rushing attack, as Rome didn't do much of anything when he entered, but the stats through 4 games for Gabriel were abysmal. When you've started four games and you've thrown one touchdown while completing less than 43% of your passes and have a passer rating of just 54, that's not going to cut it. And now we head to week five, October 17th, 1971. This time, the Los Angeles Rams are traveling down to Atlanta to take on the Falcons in a critical game in more ways than one. For the Rams, they've got a half game lead on the division over the San Francisco 49ers. So a win here would help them stay atop the division as they try to make it back to the postseason for the third time in five years. For the Falcons, well, they have to win this game if they want to have any shot at making the postseason. In a 14-game season, winning just one of your first five games is not going to cut it. But most importantly, for the purposes of our story, every indication was that this game was monumental for Roman Gabriel, because he was playing for his job. With the fans against him, with the numbers being poor and near the bottom of the league in just about everything, and with the team struggling mightily to move the ball through the air, it was getting harder and harder to justify keeping Gabriel out there as the Rams' starting quarterback. He needed to show up today. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. The Rams won this game 24-16, and perhaps the main reason why was because of Gabriel. He completed over 58% of his passes, which was a season high at the time. He threw for 209 yards, which was a season high. He had a passer rating of 87, which was also a season high. And he scored two touchdowns with his feet, with the second one coming late in the fourth quarter on a one-yard quarterback sneak that gave the Rams the lead. Los Angeles came out victorious and still atop the NFC West. And for the first time all season, it was because of their quarterback and not in spite of him. And after the game, Gabriel had a message for everyone who would listen. He was back. After the Rams won this one on the heels of Gabriel's strong play, Gabriel spoke to the press and expressed a newfound happiness and confidence that we had not seen yet all season up until that point. Gabriel said that he felt good, that he had a feeling that he was going to play well, that he didn't have a whole lot of confidence before, and that after this game, he felt like he was there and was back to where he was before the 1971 season started. After this game, any talks whatsoever about Gabriel losing his starting spot under center to Rome were completely squashed. Gabriel was the one that gave the Rams the best chance to win going forward, and Gabriel was going to be the man under center the rest of the way. Sure enough, this game against the Falcons saved his career. Gabriel threw a touchdown pass in every game after this one for the rest of the 1971 season, and finished that year with a pretty respectable stat line of 17 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. From a yardage, touchdowns, and passer rating standpoint, he somehow finished inside the top 10 of the entire NFL in each category, which is quite the rebound after the abysmal first part of the season. Eventually, Gabriel would find his way in Philadelphia, where he would stun everyone in 1973 by putting up one of the best years of his career, and where he would play until 1977, when he was 37 years old. Quite the career he had. But if you were a Rams fan back in September or early October of 1971, you probably thought that Gabriel was done. I think just about everyone felt the same way. On paper, a stat line of 209 yards and no passing touchdowns isn't going to jump out and pop off the page. But for Roman Gabriel, 
That stat line may have been the game that saved his entire career. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jrgear9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.